what are my first impressions of the X-Force Volume 2 Strife and Cable update? Well, so far, pretty good with some interesting things data mined and some nice testing thus far. Now, as for Cable, he gets a new uniform. He also gets the ability to go to Tier 4 and Level 80. As you can see here, only 8% on the potential, so it's going to take me a while, but you can obviously uh, speed that up if you want to throw some dollars around. Uh, as far as the uniform optionals, for mutants in general, they've been bad, but particularly lately, they've been very, very bad, and these uniforms, unfortunately, are no different. We have Shang-Chi here, which is okay, but then we have Spider-Man No Way Home, which is brutal, Magneto House of X, which is brutaler, it's not a word, uh, Crescent, and then Thanos Obsidian King. Some really nasty, nasty uh, optionals there. However, on the plus side, Cable does retain his proc friendliness. You can now do a 3 cancel 5 cancel 4 combo there, uh, and he does have even more damage now than his previous Kid Cable or Summer Days, so there's no question whatsoever that Cable is much stronger now with Heart of Darkness, and we're looking at anywhere from like a 30 to 50% increase in his damage, and again, he retains the proc friendliness. The only downside to this uniform, besides of course the optionals, is that it is now a much worse uniform if you are using it as a striker for Black Bolt. So keep that in mind, if you notice your Black Bolt is weaker and you bought the Cable uniform, even if you upgraded it, you're going to have to switch back to Summer Days or Kid Cable. In the case of Strife, he's very strong now with his first uniform ever. I don't have it quite at Mythic because I wasn't able to have enough feathers for everything, but the optionals are as follows. You have Heimdall, Ant-Man Quantumania, Wolverine House of X, Electro No Way Home, and then Scarlet Witch 2, or from Doctor Strange 2. Definitely better optional uniforms than Cable, but still pretty bad. Now, although we are expecting Strife to be a PvP powerhouse and expecting him to be mainly focused on PvP in that sense, um, he's actually not bad for PvE. I think he's actually pretty strong. I think he's a reasonably good Tier 3 Blast villain. Certainly, if you missed Magneto and Mysterio, or if you just don't buy seasonal uniforms, I think he actually becomes the best option. And he has a pretty flashy combo with a 3 cancel, 4 cancel, 5 rotation, where you get the triple beams plus the lightning coming down, plus the Dragon Ball Z kind of floating in the air and creating an orb of energy that you throw down and that explodes. So very nice there. He also has an instantly cancelable 6th skill. So you can also th throw that into your rotation in a 6, cancel 3, cancel 4, cancel 5 combo, where you get all this debris rotating, you get the lightning, and then you get the giant meatballs falling down. He actually throws not one, but two meatballs. So very much similar, basically Apocalypse and Scarlet Witch combined. But yeah, very proc friendly, surprisingly strong offensively, and then of course value for PvP. Um, and then we come to Domino. We're not going to be talking about Warpath. Uh, I think Domino is very clear-cut as a PvP threat. Uh, however, for PvE, she has basically no value. So I wouldn't even consider, uh, and I won't be doing like a review on her from the PvE side of things. I did some testing on the stream, and it was brutal how bad she was. She's not proc friendly. She doesn't have any cancelable skills, essentially, besides like three. You can cancel skills for buffs, but in terms of like lingering hits on any skills, there are zero. So you're basically just proccing on one ability. Nowadays, that's not good enough. That's just not good enough. You got to proc on two or three or four abilities to really keep up in any way, shape, or form. And who are we kidding? Was Domino really going to keep up with Shadow Shell, Spider Gwen, and Luna Snow? Unlikely. Very unlikely. However, on the flip side, I can report that she has some decent PvP value. Now, her optionals here, War Tiger, Chasm, Cyclops, Arrow, and Infinity Ultron, still better than Strife and much better than Cable. However, the one thing I will say is, although Domino does have some PvP value right now and, and definitely seems good, be careful that her value is not being inflated by the fact that she has a five times buff bonus in timeline right now. This could absolutely be affecting her performance and is affecting her performance, and it could turn out that she's a below average PvP character when this buff goes away. And it's uh, you're unable to simulate without the buff right now in timeline, so just you know, buyer beware for the next couple of days until this resets and she gets knocked off the list because since she's at number five since she's at five on this list for any kind of timeline battle testing she's getting 50 percent attack defense hp and 25 percent extra pierce that is a massive massive buff now if you're a huge domino fan uh now's the time i was testing her out with this team here and she was literally killing entire teams she was killing spider-man she was killing gene she was killing Adam Warlock, it was really a, a big shocker 
uh, and it was it got the stream super hype. But I just want to you know really warn people that that's not going to be her final performance, uh, and it's sort of like the final value of the character because that buff is affecting her quite a bit. You know, 50% defense and 50% HP is massive, not to be under understated. So uh, just be careful with that. But yeah, I do think PvP is her game mode. We'll have to wait and see just how good she is. But for the time being, I've, I'm going to test her out with a mighty egg. Now, besides that, we have the Warpath Transcendence, and then we have Omega Red. Right now, there's only one way to get Omega Red, and that is to splash the cash, either by going and getting his Omega Red Tentacle Chest and then praying that you get him. There's an 8% chance to get him, but I got really unlucky, so I had to buy the number two twice, and I had to buy the number two, the number one twice. So I ended up spending close to $40 Canadian to get Omega Red Bios. Alternatively, if you don't want to be an idiot like that, you can just go and buy the X Gene Selector. And the X Gene Selector is going to give you, you know, 840 Bios for Omega Red, which is almost enough to guarantee a maxed out Mythic Uniform for him next time he gets one when he inevitably gets his Tier 3. So I think this is the way to go. In hindsight, this is what I should have done, but I was just being cheeky and I was, you know, thinking I was going to get lucky. Uh, getting him right away uh, the only other way to get omega red besides those two methods is to wait uh, approximately a week or maybe a little bit more than a week for the new token event there's going to be a token event of course to celebrate the update it's right here the x-force tokens and you'll be able to exchange these tokens i presume it's 50 tokens for five bios in the same way that we were able to exchange i believe it was these tokens or these tokens i think it was these tokens here uh, to, to get five bios of spot in order to unlock him. So my guess is same sort of situation. Um, as for what his skills look like, Omega Red seems pretty decent offensively. Uh, but again, as a tier two only character, there's really not much uh, that you can really, there's really not much to expect. But uh, he does have some cancelable skills. He's just some nice skills, to be honest. Uh, he's got some pretty nice skills. His five is instantly cancelable, which is nice. His four is like a Beyblade Tornado. I wish it had a V-pad. It doesn't have a V-pad. Uh, but if you turn on the AI or turn on the SFX, you get a really nice look here. Gorgeous, gorgeous skill. Really nice. Very quintessentially Omega Red. And so you could do like a five cancel three cancel four combo. Uh, and you get a nice uh, you get a nice dose here. You get 230 hits which is not bad at all. You go ahead and divide 230 by three, and you're talking 77 hits per character. That's not bad at all, especially since we don't know just yet um, if he's really going to be made for PvE or PvP, uh, depending on when he gets uh, his tier three. Now, aside from that, we also have an improvement to a game mode and then another game mode coming back. So Timeline Survival has returned. It is here for the next six days. Make sure you only choose the highest difficulty for this unless you're a brand new player because you can only do it once. You do still have the option of buying the Survival Kit upgrade to get an additional run. And you can check out my previous Timeline Survival video where I detailed all of that information there. But you can see there's, you know, a four-star artifact available with all of the new ones as well. Actually, none of the new ones as well included. Wow. I think that's a mistake. But maybe it isn't a mistake. Wow. Uh, that's that's kind of weird. None of the new artifacts are featured. Um, it only goes up to Ulic. Wow. That's, that's a bit of a miss there because I think Cable, Strife, and Omega Red all would have pretty valuable... And, and kind of wanted artifacts by players. So that is a bit of a mistake on the devs part. But speaking of artifacts, they did improve the login event for the 28 day check-in. So this is what I wanna talk about before we get into Shadowland, we sort of wrap up the video with Shadowland. We do have a notice here about an upgraded uh, check-in. So you have the 28 day check-in that we've gotten used to for the past couple of years where you get a CTP on the 28th day and you get an Odin's blessing on the 14th day. That hasn't changed. Nothing about the login has changed. The only thing that changed is that on the 21st day, instead of getting a, uh, an extreme obelisk, a six star obelisk, you now get a three star exclusive artifact, which is quite nice. So you can get your hands on an artifact every single month, basically every single update. So 10 times a year, you're going to be able to get a free artifact now, which is very, very nice, especially considering how many are sort of very helpful um, to mandatory for PvP. However, there is an even better uh, thing if you want to spend a little bit of money. I don't really have a better way of explaining it, but there is a one plus one check-in pack. And this check-in pack is going to be $10 US, which I think is a very competitive price. And it basically just doubles all of the rewards that you get from this 28-day special check-in. 
So on the first day, instead of getting 500,000 gold, you'll get a million. And then you'll, you'll get 100 XP chips, you'll get 300 gold, you'll get 20 level 5 chips, you'll get a million gold, 200 boost points, 200 bios. And then on the seventh day, instead of getting one of these chests, you'll get two. So to recap, for essentially $10 US or $14 Canadian, you're going to get one CTP, you're going to get one three-star artifact, one Odin's Blessing, one Awakened ISO, and then you're going to get 4 million gold, 600 energy, 200 boost points, 400 hidden tickets, and 400 bios. That is taking all of the rewards that you get from the regular free check-in and then just multiplying them, like just adding like plus one, right? Because you can see here it's a million gold each week, so that adds up to four million. So you get four million for the regular check-in, and then from the $10 pack, you get another four million. This is really, really good, uh, I have to say. It is it's a very, very competitive uh, pack, uh, probably one of the best in the game now next to the Stark Stash. Uh, I don't mean to make this video like an advertisement for the sales, but it is a very good deal. And I was actually kind of kind of shocked that they did that that one. Uh, but for players who know how to log in every day, yeah, $10 for a CTP alone would be competitive. But you get all that other stuff too. And you get the upgraded login with the, with the three-star artifact. That's kind of nice. Uh, in addition, they've got some packs in the shop now that are actually quite competitive. The Crystal Relay Pack, I have to say... Uh, has better crystal to dollar ratios than Black Friday. Yeah, these are better crystal packs than Black Friday. Look at that. For 70 Canadian, I get almost 10,000 crystals. That is, that's right there. That's a slightly better than Black Friday, which is pretty bananas. Uh, pretty much everything else in the pa in the shop uh, packs nowadays are not very good. The Doctor Strange card pack is not bad if you just want to get it over with quick and dirty for those whales out there who just want the 4% all tech increase. Um, however, for those of you hoping to gamble to get the Doctor Strange cards, they actually aren't available until Friday. And they even posted a notice uh, apologizing about this because of uh, sort of the mistake that they made. So if you go over to the forums, as soon as this decides to load, you will see that there was a notice about this uh, event. And so if you purchased uh, the comic card pack, like if you open these chests um, between the update landing and this notice being posted. So if you gambled the basically really early after the update landed, uh, you can actually submit a request to get a refund through customer service, okay? Only for the crystals that you spent on those chests uh, during that time period between the update landing. So after the update landed until the notice was posted uh, about an hour and a half later. So basically in the first 90 minutes, if you gambled for cards, hoping to get the Doctor Strange cards, they're not there. And it was sort of like, badly advertised or badly worded in the patch notes that they would be there right away uh, they're only going to be there starting friday so we do have to wait for that but yeah otherwise uh, that about does it for sales in the game you do have the new ctp the ctp of uh conquest i believe and there is a um a loyalty check-in or loyalty uh, bonus thing here if you spend 330 dollars You'll be able to get a uh, CTP of Conquest for free, as well as some other sort of junky rewards. Honestly, all the other rewards are really bad this time around besides the CTP. So I think this is very, very overpriced. Uh, luckily, uh, the CTP appears to be in the regular rotation here. So I think at, at some point you'll be able to gamble for it specifically and kind of target farm it if that's what you're into. Finally, we come to Shadowland, the biggest upgrade of this update. So for this one here, you still have your one to 35 grind with a few new stages that I was able to catch like a Nadia and rescue stage, a green goblin, lizard, scorpion, um, Madam Hydra stage, and then a crossbone stage with Hydra cap and some other uh, villains from that sort of uh, team up. So pretty cool to see some new Shadowland stages, not too many. No new stage environments, but I still think it's nice. What's even nicer is that after stage 35, whenever you play, you're going to be getting 10 tokens for each surviving character. So if I quickly show you what this looks like here, if we take Hulk and we just speed through with two other characters, just for the sake of showing you guys, it doesn't really matter who I choose here. Uh, each character surviving until the end of the fight in Shadowland is going to give you per stage 10 tokens. Now, those 10 tokens are then multiplied by the number of characters that you have. So in this case, I have three characters. You can see they're all surviving, which are those little, um, you know, Iron Man icons. So I get 30 Shadowland tokens. So 10 tokens per character means that in a week, 
if you spend one character getting up to stage 35 and then you just spend three characters every single stage after that you're going to have 222 characters left over after the initial 35 which means you can farm 2200 tokens every single week as you can see here i already have 340 tokens and i'm only 14 stages into shadowland and i still have the majority of my roster available so what that means is if you have the full roster of characters including omega red and you utilize all of them every single week it will take you exactly five weeks to get a ctp that means you can get 10 and a half almost a half you can get 10 ctps free every single year now i don't necessarily recommend just going for the ctp and nothing else so you're probably going to end up getting uh, with this other alternate strategy that I'm suggesting, maybe somewhere from like seven to eight CTPs. I still think that's really good and competitive, but I think what you should do, especially if you are still building your roster, is you should buy out the Carbonadium. I know it's only 200 Carbonadium, so it doesn't seem like a lot, but it will add up every month. You know, over the year, that's almost 5,000 Carbonadium. That's almost an extra tier four character every single year that you were able to get for free. Now, it will slow down, like I said, the number of... Uh, CTPs that you can collect, but I think it is worth it because then you get tier fours. However, obviously it's up to you. You can spend the tokens on whatever you want. Some of these items have weekly limits. Some of these items have monthly limits. So just keep that in mind. And there's only six items to choose from. So you don't really have a lot of uh, decision paralysis to go through. But yeah, I think the Shadowland rework is very good. I think the Shadowland shop is fantastic. I do still want to see more new stages in the future, especially with new characters. Like I think there should be Shadowland stages with every single character in the game. Not necessarily, not like a stage with 257 opponents, but I just mean, I think there should be a stage that features, right? I think every character should be featured in Shadowland at one point or another as an enemy, which even if you take three enemies per stage, um, and you divide that, you know, 257 by three, still have like 86 stages, right? So we've already covered a bunch of the characters. They're, they don't need to add 86 new stages, but there certainly are a bunch of characters that don't have any stages at all that could use one in Shadowland. But anyways, that is my take on the update thus far. I think it's fantastic. I've got lots to dive into, lots to test. We're gonna build up Omega Red shortly here. Uh, but in the meantime, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the update. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.